Now when we ask Muslims about Muhammad, Muslims tend to brag constantly about the wisdom of their Prophet. They love to tell you how smart and truthful Muhammad was. They will also tell you that Muhammad is the best of creation. And Muslims will say, you have indeed in the Messenger of Allah a beautiful pattern of conduct. Now ask yourself this question. Should anyone or any sane person in 2020 follow a man that lived 1400 years ago in a hot desert somewhere in Arabia surrounded by sheep, goats and camels? Now let us investigate what Muhammad actually said to his companions, i.e. the Sahaba, about the sun and its rays. Zur reported, I heard from Ubay ibn Kaab a statement made by Abdullah bin Mas'ud in which he said, He who gets up for prayer every night during the year will hit upon Laylatul Qadr. Ubay said, By Allah, I, there is no God but He, that Laylatul Qadr is in Ramadan. He swore without reservation, By Allah, I know the night, it is the night on which the Messenger of Allah commanded us to pray. It is that which precedes the morning of 2070 and its indication is that the sun rises bright on that day without rays. This is Sahih Muslim hadith number 762a. From another hadith, in this case Jama Turmidi, hadith number 793, it says, Zir said, I said to Abay bin Kaab, O Abu al Mundir, how do you know that it is the night of the 27th? He said, Rather, the Messenger of Allah informed us that it is a night after which the sun rises without rays. And from a third hadith, this time from Sahih Muslim, hadith number 762 D, it says, by the indication or by the sign which the Messenger of Allah gave us, and that is that on that day, the sun would rise without having any ray in it. Sun without its rays? That would be a huge disaster for everybody. Without the sun's rays, all photosynthesis on earth would stop. That means all plants would die and eventually all animals that rely on plants for food, including humans, would die too. Clearly Muhammad was wrong here and he had no idea that life itself would cease to exist without the sun's rays. So if you as a Muslim claim that Muhammad is the one to follow and his words are pure wisdom and that he was constantly informed by Jibreel, that means Allah is not all-knowing and he and his prophet are nothing but deceivers and liars. But we know there is no Allah and Muhammad is a false prophet. Furthermore, we can conclude that if you want to follow Muhammad in 2020 as a Muslim and declare that he is the best example to follow, you as a Muslim will have to open your skull, remove your brains out of your skull and throw them in the garbage bin. I mean, why would you need any brains if you are still a follower of Muhammad after watching this damaging video? Clearly, Muslims have fallen victim of this man-made cult and its cult leader Muhammad. But we know, the moment Muslims start to think, they will eventually leave Islam and become apostates. Please, share this video on social media to save these poor souls out of this man-made cult. Thank you for watching and God bless.
Plants are the fundamental food source on Earth, and the moment that light stops reaching us after eight minutes, their ability to produce nutrients through photosynthesis will end. This won't immediately kill the plants, though, because when it's dark, they breathe oxygen like every other organism. They will all enter this state, which means they will begin to use up all of their energy supplies, and then eventually die. The smaller plant species won't survive more than a few days, although others might survive for weeks. Virtually all vegetation will have died within months, though, with the exception of some of the largest trees. They have such large food stores and are so resistant to cold temperatures that they could potentially survive for decades before finally succumbing to the effects of the sun going out. However, it would be hard for them to withstand the negative 150 degrees Fahrenheit after the first year. Number 3. Animal life would die. The combination of the lack of light and lack of warmth would certainly spell the end for most species on Earth, especially since there would be no more vegetation for food sources. Soon animals that rely on plants will die, and predators will themselves run out of food and die as well. The only species that will last longer are the scavengers, who will likely have large enough sources of food because everything else is dying, that they will be able to survive until it gets too cold for them to live. There are exceptions to this because not every organism on Earth relies on the sun. Microorganisms that live close to the Earth's core or in volcanic vents in the oceans won't notice any difference at all and could continue to live for millions if not billions of years. Interestingly enough, this frozen Earth would be similar to the moons around Jupiter. Astronomers believe they could also have microbes living in their frozen waters. As humans, the sun going out won't necessarily mean the end for all of us. Those that are prepared or fortunate enough will be able to survive. If you assume that we can get enough food, it would be possible to live in submarines in the deepest and warmest parts of the oceans, or even live in contained habitats that are powered by nuclear or geothermal energy. In Iceland, for example, they already use geothermal energy to heat 87% of their homes, and this is a power source that will remain available for hundreds of years after the sun has gone out. Number 2 the ocean surface would freeze. You might expect that the water on Earth would freeze pretty soon after the temperatures plummeted, but water's propensity for retaining heat means that this will take quite a long time. For sure, the rivers, lakes, and ponds would freeze in a matter of weeks. It's a different story for the oceans, though. Within a few months of the sun going out, they will be covered in a layer of ice, but this insulation will further contain the heat within the water beneath it, and it will take at least a thousand years to fully solidify. This will make it possible for organisms to survive in the deepest and warmest parts of the ocean. Like I mentioned before, Earth will begin to resemble distant worlds and moons, such as Europa, that are believed to have large bodies of water beneath their icy crust. Underground water deposits will also take longer before they completely freeze. Some, like hot springs, are kept warm by volcanic processes, and these would continue to freely flow for as long as the heat from the Earth's core was able to reach them. This could also lead to the buildup of pressure beneath frozen water on the surface and result in massive geysers where the water breaks through. Similar effects have been seen elsewhere in the solar system, and this would contribute to further layers of ice being formed on the surface. Number 1. The Atmosphere Would Freeze Once the oceans have fully frozen and temperatures on Earth have plummeted to around minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit, the planet will be like virtually any other piece of rock that hurls through the depths of space. The one thing that would distinguish it from other planets is its atmosphere, but even this will go out in about 1,000 years. Rather than simply venting into outer space, the lowering temperatures will cause the atmosphere to freeze. Water molecules would have already long been gone by the time this happens, but the rest is mainly made up of nitrogen, which has a freezing point of minus 346 degrees Fahrenheit. It's likely that most of the atmosphere would turn to snow and fall to the ground, covering the Earth in a thick blanket, which would be similar in color to the snow we see on mountains today. There would, however, no longer be oxygen in the environment, so any life that had miraculously managed to survive until this point would quickly die out, with nowhere left to seek refuge.